How's it going? And it's going. It's nice to see your face, man. You too, brother. You too. Um, as you know, we're doing this. Uh, the check-in videos are about just checking in with everyone, making sure everybody's like doing okay uh, while we do this great lockdown of 2020. Hopefully, we're still locked down until it's uh, reasonably safe to go outside. Right. Um, yeah. I try to put art and art making and the art world in perspective because it's just um i feel like i want to do more mm -hmm. i feel like i want to um just sort of connect with humanity in a way that goes beyond um the creative right now because it just feels like such a you know a meteor hurtling towards earth you know it's like it's it's hard but but anyway man <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i yeah i feel you uh what are you um what are you working on right now you say you're trying to get back in there what are you working on in the studio yeah you know so it, you know after the campaign which um I think mentally it kind of just kills the creativity because you being a first time kind of candidate and learning how to operate in that kind of political sphere. Um, it kills, for, at least for me, it kills a lot of the creativity because you, you become about expressing like three talking points and having your stump speech ready at all times and going. And it's all about data, collecting data. Yeah. Um, and talking and really listening to individuals and so i think for me it, it's taken it's taken a while just to kind of feel that creative feel that creativity to come back and yeah you know, I, i've worked on a few pieces since and and for me it's trying to discover like what avenue am i going to pursue in the sense that you know the work that i was making before i, I ran for office I, I felt like it was it was leading up to that point to run and it became like running for office was an extension of the, the work. And, yeah. and so for me, like now that that has concluded, you know, um, I feel like just making work, artwork to just hang on walls, you know, instead of making such kind of more public work that I was doing. Yeah. And so, and so I'm trying to think of a creative way to incorporate the, my political experience in it because it's such a surreal experience to go through. Like, you know, I think someone once told me, you know who your real friends are when you run for office. And it was so true. I mean, so much backstabbing. I was like, oh, wow. Man, I, dude. I thought we were friends. <laughs> so, <laughs> or not. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah. I will never run for public office. I'm just going to put that <laughs> out there. But I, I definitely understand the need to be like an active part of change in your community. Uh, in whatever capacity so yeah I, I think it's for me you know I wanted to prove to my community that that you know it doesn't have to be this way like you don't have, the people who represent us are typically anointed and they're wealthy predominantly white <laughs> you know? yeah. and and you know this is a majority Latino Latina district and and I was like you know I, at least I'm going to show my community that a regular person can run and yeah. you know we did fairly well but you know but now it's like I do want to have talk like somehow create work that kind of talks about that experience and and what that was like because it was really kind of stressful in, in, a, in a way and and so yeah uh, but yeah I think the the work whatever develops out of it I think I think it it will be interesting well, at least I'm going to try to make it interesting so right no, I've always, when I've seen your work, um, especially your uh, like political signs and your uh, like uh, real estate style signs, I've always thought it would be interesting to see it as a like you know a campaign office setup yeah. that's actually an installation <laughs> with everything that you have saying everything you know what i'm saying it's uh yeah. because i think that work it's really it really is right at that boundary and you have to do a double take is it actually something that somebody paid for <laughs> to to put out yeah. here or is it uh is it art yeah 
Yeah, you know, and the Paleta cart was interesting because, uh, you know, I feel like that's the test mode um, or testing phase rather. And the idea is when I was thinking about it is to make multiples of them and then stick them out in the neighborhood. But I, I felt like the wording on the side of the cart had to be right. Right. And, and I'm still exploring that. And then also I wanted it to be somewhat, I wanted it with this piece of work to be at least like a call to action to, for something. And I don't know what that is, or maybe it's just to bring attention to our um, Latino and Latina business owners who've kind of held down the block. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I think for me, I think it's important to remind people, even like the newcomers, like, you know, like we, this wasn't just the hood, you know, like this, <laughs> right. this community, so yeah. Yeah, oh man. Um these kinds of changes happening in neighborhoods that that don't completely um, take into consideration the history of neighborhoods. Uh, it's disheartening. Um, I mean, yeah, we don't need to have a gentrification conversation, but it's yeah. essentially um, sort of the template. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think for me, it's like, it's the erasure of our history and culture, you know, like typically a developer will come in and, and rename a, a neighborhood, you know, to make it sound more, you know, like appealing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was the, uh, the New York borrowification of Fort Worth a few years ago <laughs> when they're calling things like the, the East side or the upper East side or South of, uh, <laughs> main but, street or something it's just yeah it's but it's uh it, it's subtle but it's insidious mm -hmm. and it completely uh rebrands neighborhoods so that it's easier to um yeah displace yeah. people it's like wh where are people supposed to go exactly yeah it was yeah my, i think my favorite is like when they split like two streets and they combine like the first letters together like sopo or so yeah. it's like all right whatever man yeah exactly. what are uh what's the piece that you're um gracious enough to share with us uh for the auction it is the idea of language and how it's inherently ours as a community because you know, growing up, I would hear these kind of slang idioms. And for me, I thought that was interesting because it it's something that the a community kind of creates and only they can understand. So is it was kind of this interesting um, idea about how it actually becomes a misunderstanding of culture. Yeah. And kind of what I was just talking about, you know, how some individuals in the community don't understand and and then they make assumptions and so for me like no ipad which it was always like you know something that you know in a prior life and and growing up i used to do like a lot of manual labor and so i worked with a lot of immigrants and so you know when there whenever there was a problem or an issue you know they'd be like eh, it's no problem no ipad yeah and, and for me you know it was interesting that because if you translate it, it makes no sense. It the literal translation is there's no fart, and so <laughs> and I don't you know I don't know where that comes from, but you know, but it was just like it's and that's I think that which is so beautiful about that because man that's ours like we use right. that in in our day to day vocabulary and and uh, you know it it was just something I thought that was really beautiful in a sense and and for me i became really fascinated with the piñata as far as the um the texture of it and mm -hmm. how that the it was interesting about the history of that how it was really used as a vehicle to communicate other ideas or indoctrinate other indigenous people when the spanish came in they basically co-opted all their you know um religious and and uh cult cultural um things and and so they basically use that to basically um have them conform into you know christian ideology and things like that so i thought it was it was interesting that it, and when i was looking thinking about it in today's terms like you know no one really knows about the history of the pinata and and how convoluted it is and 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 what a 
kind of like there's a cloaking to it you know like and, and I thought oh I could re I could I could reimagine this in a sense yeah. that that um people associate pinatas with birthday celebrations as a very innocent and saccharine thing right. and I thought if I could put that out into the community like people would be like oh that, that's really cute like what is that and then using that language to almost like this satellite that is or radio signal that is broadcasting to a certain community yeah and I, the real estate works you know that's where the, the signage came in because i thought it was two separate objects talking at each other but talking to di two different communities and and the for me i thought it was interesting that one was very um textured and and crafted and the other one was like sleek and manufactured and right. i thought that was kind of an interesting kind of aspect of, of the work so, yeah and they're both like if they're right next to each other uh one becomes invisible to the people that live there because they're like what the hell is this thing yeah <laughs> and then the other one it's like it's like uh the uh anecdotes or stories about um first nation people encountering uh columbus and not being able to see the boat because right. it's just like <laughs> i don't even know what this thing is or what what's going on but yeah. yeah but i thought you know for me as an artist and how much i love this community is like all right i gotta make some work that that is for them and 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 so I decided that you know because we all get caught up in this this grind of building your cv having as many shows as you want right or, sorry as you can and teaching you know so that way you can get that tenor track position and you know and then finally i just decided that i wasn't going to do that anymore if i was going to i was going to have my own shows and i'm going I'm to put them out into the community and and for yeah. me that was the most liberating thing but also the most empowering because you know, even to this day people walk up to me and they find out that i was doing those uh real estate signs they're like that was so odd. i felt like you were talking to me i was like <laughs> and i was <laughs> yeah. yeah so it was just for me it's like man that was just a really great experience in a sense that you know and, and i think it speaks to the power of art like you can just you don't need four gallery walls to no stuff. you don't and i think um with the world that we're in the middle of and uh, hopefully we'll be emerging out of um, what's on the other side uh, hopefully is a really strong evaluation of these relationships and um, the the power in the art world um, house how 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 does it redefine the relationships between artists and galleries? How uh, mm -hmm. does it, yeah, consider the the place of museums in public spaces? And we're gonna be talking about all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see see how it comes out on the other side. Yeah. Well, man, uh, thank you for taking the time to to chat and. Um, but yeah, man, thank you so much for including me on this on this series. It's um, yeah, yeah, I've been watching them, so it's great. And the first one I saw was Annette, and I love Annette, man. She's like my Zen master. So she um, is a Zen master. She has just a, a focus and a calm that uh, is infectious. You can't you can't be bummed around Annette. Yeah, yeah, and she's such a gracious artist, man. I remember like when I was teaching, like my first year out of grad school, I was teaching a night class um and she would stay late for work and she was the chair of the department at that time and and i would just go in there not knowing now that i look back on it and just have these long conversations with her and, and it was amazing because she would just stop whatever she was doing and give me her undivided attention and we would talk about life stuff yeah and i am so fortunate that you know that she could have just said giovanni i'm busy like you know right she didn't, so it was her, yeah she's the zen master so. yeah no i i saw her work um at i think it was uh gallery 414 in fort worth uh for the first time in the maybe early 2000s oh wow 
and then um, I ran to her a couple of times at the Tuesday night, Tuesday evening lectures, and she introduced me to Vincent Falsetta, and me, Annette, and Vincent would go across the street to the great outdoors sandwich shop after each lecture, and just like <laughs> chat, man, that's how we became friends. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, she's a great person. Yeah. But thank you again, Giovanni, and uh, take care, and we'll talk soon, man. Okay, man, you too. All right, bye. Thank you.